The masking tools in Perfect Layers make blending images fast and easy. I'll show you a couple of examples of how to blend multiple images using the masking bug. In this first example, I've taken two different exposures of the same scene. The typical exposure bracketing you might do for an HDR image, although I'm not going to process these with HDR. The top layer is the nominal exposure, which is pretty good in and of itself. The sky's well exposed, however, parts of the valley in the shadows, it's just a touch too dark. On the bottom layer is an overexposed frame. The valley is much, much brighter, uh, and the details of the trees in the valley are visible. Of course, the sky is completely blown out. I'm going to blend these two images together to pull in some of the shadow detail in the valley. The nominal exposure has most of the scene captured well, so I've placed that on top. I'll use the masking bug with a gradient shape to reveal just a touch of the valley details from the overexposed image. Now, this scene has a natural shadow line, and I'll use it as a guide as I position and feather the mask. I'll drop the bug on the image, rotate it around to reveal the valley floor. Now, by default, the mask opacity is 100%, which is entirely too much here. I'll lower the opacity way down, somewhere between 25 and 30%. And now I'll fiddle with the bug position and the feather to get a soft, gentle fade. If I move the bug too high, the transition will look unnatural. One last adjustment or two, something like that. Let's do a quick before and after. I'll duplicate the top layer, reset the mask, so here's what the single nominal exposure was, and here's the scene with the blend. And in fact, I might push the bug up just a little more to smooth that fade. There we go. So before and after. The details in the valley are much more visible now, and I haven't lost the natural shadow, keeping a sense of distance and depth in the scene. Of course, this image isn't done yet. The blending gives a uniform, albeit flat, exposure, one that's primed for stylization and perfect effects. Here's another example uh, with a different shooting situation. I have two photos of the same scene taken roughly 10 minutes apart. The sun is rising, and there's these dark, stormy clouds whipping across the sky. And I'm using a tripod with a longer exposure to let the clouds move through the frame and creating a sense of motion. On the bottom layer, I like the darkness of the lower third, those deeper oranges in the sunrise, and that all of the street lights across the bridge are visible. They stand out more because the dark clouds are behind them. On the top layer, the upper left quadrant of the frame has a nice patch of clouds. However, the street lamps in the lower right are difficult to see against the sky. Now, this photo was taken closer to sunrise, and so the sky was getting brighter. So I'll use the masking bug and take the best parts of each image and blend them together into a single photo. I want to bring in the dark clouds on the right side and uh, use the lower third of the bottom layer for the bridge as well. So let's start with the clouds in the sky. I'll drop a bug on the photo and begin positioning the bug and adjusting the feather. I'm paying attention to only the sky as I work the bug. The blend doesn't need to be perfect. You know, the clouds are soft, they're moving, so that gives me some leeway with the blend. And so the sky looks pretty good now. There's a nice balance of clouds across the sky. So let's deal with the bridge. So I'll click the Add button in the Tool Options bar to add another masking bug. Now I'll position that bug over the bridge, adjust its feather, and you can see the shape of the mask in the layer stack. The right and bottom images of the top layer have been masked away, revealing the darker clouds and bridge from the layer beneath. Okay, let's do the before and after again. So I'll duplicate the top layer, reset its mask. So I've kept the upper left of this top layer and brought in the bridge and clouds from the lower layer. And the top edge with the deeper blues needs a little bit of cleanup. That's not a smooth enough transition. So I'll add one more masking bug with the add button, move and rotate it into position, and make that blue sky more uniform. Yes, that, that looks better. And this is now ready for stylization. So, blending images in perfect layers is easy, it's kind of fun, and it lets you bring in the best parts of your images to create a more balanced, more powerful photo.